the Lord showed me something very uh, interesting and enlightening. And this might be very helpful to people out there. But also that you don't feel bad. Satan, there is one thing that he's going to get you on, which is why the world's going to fall apart. Now, I believe the reason why the Antichrist is going to take over the world and Satan is going to take over the world is because of one key thing that people keep using. Now, one of the greatest things that the Lord told the church, which is the greatest gift, was concerning charity. This is called love in action. Charity means love in action. This is why we prefer the word charity in the Bible, not just love. But love is the greatest thing ever in the Bible, and charity, you put it into action. <coughs> now Satan, in order to make his system as powerful as God, because think about it, throughout the past centuries, Christianity prevailed because of this, it's charity. Yep. It's charity. It's where they had a love and a burden for souls who are dying and going to hell. It's also because that when their enemies persecuted them, they didn't return evil in return, and they laid down their lives for Jesus Christ. And God mightily used that. you got to understand this. England and America became very powerful nations at that time. And they thrived because of their that uh, caring attitude. Despite of, I know, of the racism, colonial, uh, colonization, and all that at that time. But you got to be honest. If you're going to go centuries more behind that, they were a lot more loving. The reason why is because they were more Christian-minded people. See? Okay. But there's one thing that you got to understand. Satan, because he sees how powerful the Lord has used this to thrive, his church, Satan will use this too. Mm -hmm. So Satan, I believe this, the reason why his world has thrived and it's bringing closer to the new world order system even closer is because of this, people talking about love. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, let's look at a lot of things concerning this New World Order system. Why is it that the government is getting more in control of the people? Because you love and care for homeless people. Yeah. The poor people. You rich people are so cruel to hoard in money for yourselves, so we should... Uh, tax you even harder and what we should do is that we should give more handouts to these poor people to these beggars to these people who are abusing with drugs etc that's why government has more of a handout excuse to control think about this how do why do democrat presidents get millions or hundreds of thousands of votes because of minorities yeah, nationalities why because of love mm -hmm. We care for you. We respect your rights, you know. The uh, Hispanic people, they have their rights. The black people, they have their rights. And then all these other minorities, the Muslim people, etc., etc. So because of that, that's why the government can get more control over the people. Let's look at other cases right here. The ecumenical movement. Why is it that the ecumenical movement right here that this is thriving even more because of love <coughs> because we want to respect all different world religions mm -hmm. there's something we can learn from Islam mm -hmm. and you Christians are too narrow-minded and bigoted yeah. uh, the Catholic Church should unite together with Judaism uh, the Mormons with the Seventh-day Adventists and why do Baptists have to be so divisive in doctrine why? Why are we so divisive? Why can't we all get along as different denominations? That's why we don't call ourselves a particular denomination. So says one of these loving, lovey-dovey people. <laughs> why is it that the false prophets of today, they're growing more in church membership? Because their preaching is about love, love, love. That's why Joel Osteen became powerful. Rick Warren became powerful. T.D. Jakes became powerful. Oh, yeah. Why? They're all preaching in a love, love, love spirit. Yeah. But no, I don't like Pastor Kim right there where he's preaching with a mean spirit. He's yelling. He's too hard. He's too strict. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of people are running away from Bible-believing truth. You see that? Love. Satan has distorted the minds of this people. Why does a younger generation get worse and worse and worse? Let's say, for example, divorce. Why is it more than half of the families going through divorce? 
there's fornication, and there's a lot. Uh, we even uh, tolerate different genders. They call it now, you, where we have to. It's not just male and female. There's a lot of things in between. Now there's homosexuality. There's transgender, and there's God knows what, how many colors of the rainbow they want to add over there. So you see right here, why? Because of love. That's why the Bible says that sex will rise at the end times. So what uh, Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God intermingled with the humans. Why? Let's respect their gender, their, uh, uh, their biology may be different from ours. But hey, it's not just male, uh, male human and a female human. It's all in between. See? So that's the reason why this uh, homosexuality is growing. And that's the reason why marriages are ruining even more with divorces growing higher and fornication is rampant. Nearly every young person uh, in the college campus definitely would have slept with somebody. And if one of them said that he or she was a virgin, everyone would think you're weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, this is rampant. Why? Because of this distorted view of love. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Satan can set up the New World Order system? That's why. Yeah. Now... <laughs> So, thus, their tactic is this. They accuse us where Christianity is greatest, greatest. Yeah. We're known for this. But now, they accuse us of this. Yeah. That's oh. the reason why the New World Order system can thrive. Because their tactic is this. Now, this is something to keep in mind, which will be very eye-opening in your spiritual walk, too. The way Satan can make you look like the bad guy is where they put the burden on you that you're being mean toward the person, where you're being hateful, mm -hmm. where you're inconsiderate. That's the reason why it's more hard, if you're going to be a Republican, for example, to debate in politics. Why? Because a Democrat, all he, had, he or she has to use is some sub story mm -hmm. of something about, you know, because of your ideal, you're overlooking the Hispanic people concerning about where they're immigrating toward the states. And the Republicans, they'll always have to say, look, I'm not against uh, people immigration. I'm only against yeah. illegal immigration. But what do you think will win more of the other person's heart is where you're thinking about them, mm -hmm. caring more about them. And then they're calling you hate. But this is Satan's, this is eye-opening. You know what this is? This is not love. This is a distorted view on love. You know what Satan gives? Selfish sensitivity. This is a key word I want you to mark down, is selfish sensitivity. It's not love, it's selfish sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not loving. No, you're just selfish. Mm -hmm. And you're being so sensitive about yourself, you're not sensitive toward the other person. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. That's good. You know what we're more sensitive about? We're not sensitive about how we feel. We're sensitive toward... One person you should be sensitive about, but they became totally insensitive that they've taken his name in vain without any guilt. You notice this? The sensitivity should lay toward this person, but you know what's going on? The world is going more toward this selfish sensitivity toward me. That's how you're going to catch these guys, and that's how you also should look at your own heart as well. That's good. All right, so before there's like a church fight, or you think the pastor's being too mean in the preaching or teaching, or before you start thinking about some kind of excuse, you better, re you better look at yourself and say, I wonder if I'm being just sensitive toward myself rather than God. That'll be eye-opening. That'll be eye-opening. God says, worship no other God but me. And then you're not, you're totally insensitive of that, that you're like, oh, let's be sensitive about myself. I want to mingle my God with that, etc. That's wickedness. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, people who are uh, abuse or who are into substance abuse and they're homeless, that's the reason why they can't make progress and work in a job. Why? Because of that selfish sensitivity. Give me something. I'm starving right here. Let me give an example. There's this, uh, this person who made big news in New York City. A person had diseased feet. Poor guy. I feel bad for him. I buy him new shoes. And there was this New York cop that bought this poor beggar really nice shoes. And it made headline news everywhere on Facebook and everywhere. Everyone was saying wow and all that. But guess what? That bum 
was a selfish, sensitive person. Oh, you're mean. You're uncaring. No. You know what the, what the news reporters found out? That guy had enough money to have his own little condo. Oh, but why would he have s diseased feet? That's how selfish he is that, that what happened is he can't even do any sort of effort. Yeah. That he prefer his feet to become diseased. That he wouldn't even put in the effort to uh, make his feet warm. That's how bad it is. See? Selfish sensitivity is how Satan corrupted this whole world, and that's why we're going to head toward this new world order system. And so, you know what we do when we preach hard against sin? You get a bunch of selfish, sensitive people coming, yeah. mm -hmm. and they walk out like little sissies, yeah. yep. and then guys acting all feminine, and the women mm -hmm. acting hyper-feminine. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then they cry about the smallest little thing. And then after the millennials, they're going to cry, wah, wah, worse than you millennials on yeah. anything out there. We're totally spoiled rotten. Yeah, we are. We've gotten more and more sensitive. You know what the Christian warfare is about? It's about soldier. It's about fighting. It's about standing for the truth. And guess what? When these Christians were soldiers during the dark ages and under persecution under early Rome, yeah, when they had love for their enemies, mm -hmm. they weren't sissies either. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, uh, pray for me. I'm going through this kind of hardship and stuff like that. You tell that to a 12-year-old who was burnt <laughs> at the stake at early Rome. Yeah. You know how we water yeah. down so much? Yeah. All right. They had more love than you, and they had more of a soldier attitude than you. Yeah. Love should make you stronger, not weaker. Mm -hmm. You know what love in action is? Putting it in action, where you're totally sacrificing self, and thinking about the other people, but more importantly, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Sure. That's the key. That's the key. Now, look, I'm not, uh, I'm not, sorry, I'm not being critical about anybody's problems at the church. We care about people. We yeah. love each other. Mm -hmm. We uplift yeah. each other. Yeah. But what you, what you all need to hear, you all need to hear this once in a while. We can't just keep patting each other's head mm -hmm. all this time without getting a kind of preaching that I wonder if we're getting too spoiled right here where we've gotten so soft. Yeah, sure. mm. And we've got to realize that we got to start taking grit yep. and being strong for Jesus mm. Christ. Yeah. And that message has not been preached enough. Yeah. Right. What's yeah. been preached more is about love, love, love rather than, rather than stand up, stand up for Jesus. Yeah. By the way, mm. what they refer to as hate, here's something you got to understand. These people who claim love they do hate something too. Come on. They're hateful. You know what yeah. they you know what they hate? They hate right, they hate holiness. Mm -hmm. You know what they hate? They hate what the Bible says. Yeah. Tr they hate truth. You know what they hate? They hate God. Mm -hmm. No, I, I love Jesus Christ. No, if you love Jesus Christ, then you're going to respect his wish on what he says. Don't follow any other God but me. Yeah. You think that's going to work with your wife? I love you, honey, but I've got 20 other women that I want to adore and reverence and take care of as well. But I love you, honey. You're so, you're so hateful. You're so hateful. How can you not respect my love? No, that's selfishness. Yeah. Yeah. That is wickedness from the pits of hell. That's what God said about worshiping him. That's cheating on him. That's what he says. Yeah. When you don't worship, uh, when you worship other gods except him, that's cheating on him. Mm -hmm. That's wickedness. Yep. So, yeah, you call us hate, but why? Because we hate the right things. Here's something you gotta understand. When you love something, you will hate something. Yes. <clears throat> no matter who you are, a believer or an unbeliever, you're not all love. There is something you will hate. Yeah. I showed you their side, what they hated. You know what we hate? Now, compare the hate list right here. Everyone's a hate group. Sorry. <laughs> Southern Poverty Law Center, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, man. That's, you guys are a hate group. You know what you guys are? You hate holiness. You hate Bible. You hate truth. You hate Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you call uh, Bible-believing Baptists hate groups? What kind of a hate center are you, man? You're just full of the devil. You know what we hate? I'll tell you what we hate. We hate other gods that replace Jesus Christ. Yeah, right, you know what right, we hate? Yeah. We hate lies. Yes. You know what we hate? We hate satanic systems, satanic yeah, beliefs. Amen. We hate what? Anything, anything against 
Jesus Christ. Anything Amen. that is not under his approval. Don't you think that's the right kind of hang? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, look at, you see how Satan successfully blinded the world? This is why the New World Order system has to happen. Because they put the burden on you. Whenever you argue with them or explain them Bible, you got to stop thinking in an intellectual mindset how to argue against that. Look at their heart, why they're saying that. What they're doing is they're trying to put a burden on you that you're unloving. And what you need to do is that that can become a powerful argument for you. Why don't you act like the liberal like they do and put the burden on them that they're being hateful and not being loving? That's the key. And guess what? Then you put them in the hot seat and they can't explain themselves. So how do you put them in the hot seat? Why do you hate holiness? Why do you hate what the Bible says right here? The Bible says homosexuality is wrong. Why do you hate what the Bible says? Why do you hate the truth? The truth is you get saved by grace, not by works. Why do you hate that? Why do you hate Jesus by trying to put Allah with that? Muhammad with that? The Virgin Mary with that one? The Pope with that? Buddha with that? Why do you hate Jesus? See, that's what you want to do. You want to put the hot seat on them.